welcome to the uh, Asian Society, uh, Cardiac Society and uh, JCS uh, conjunction uh, webinar. The, my name is Teiji Akagi from Okayama University and my co-chair co is uh, Olivia Luz, uh, Philippine uh, Cardiology, uh, College of Cardiology. Welcome all, Luz. And welcome all of the speakers today. And uh, thank you for the attending these sessions for many audience. Uh, so the <laughs> first speaker will be uh, on reoperation of Tetralogy of Fallot. Um, uh, he is connected with Guangdong uh, Cardiovascular Institute, Guangdong Provincial People's Hospital, Dr. J. Mai Chen. Uh, it's your- Thank you. Thank you, doctors, for your kind in, in, introduction. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Jimmy Chen. I'm a cardiac surgeon from southern part of China. Uh, today, I want to talk about reoperation in the charge of fellow. I will share my PPT with. Uh, can everybody see it? Yes, please start. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, the charge of fellow is the most common synodic congenital heart disease, uh, including pulmonary stenosis, overriding aorta, and the VSD and the right ventricular hypertrophy. Patients with tetralogy of fallow typically underwent VSD repair and the relief of the right ventricular outflow tractor obstruction. Those with severe pulmonary annual hypoxia and the infundibular stenosis will undergo a transannular patch. The overall surviving following tetralogy repair has significantly improved in recent days. But as time goes, repaired tetralogy patient may suffer from incidence of re-intervention. A study shows the cumulative incidence of reinterventions after 35 years of follow up was 44%. Nowadays, over 90% tetralogy patients survive to adulthood, resulting in an increased prevalence of tetralogy of fellow in adults. TTE, cardio CT, or MRI, or catheterization can be used to follow up after the preliminary, primary surgical repair. However, the most com the long-term Adverse outcomes in patients with repair of tetralogy is pulmonary regurgitation, residual VSD, and uh, right ventricle off-road tract obstruction. Patients underwent surgical tetralogy repair especially those underwent a transannular patch strategy may appear varying level of pulmonary regurgitation. Studies from different institutes shows that after five to 10 years after tetralogy repair, 40% to 85% of patients have moderate to severe pulmonary regurgitation. On the other hand, 
the transatrial pathway seems have a bad result. Pulmonary regurgitation may cause right ventricular ventricle dilation and dysfunction, results in tricuspid regurgitation, QRS duration prolongation, heart failure, left ventricular dysfunction, arrhythmia, and the worst sudden death. There are several statements and guidelines of the indication of reintervention, especially for the pulmonary valve replacement. This flow chart shows the strategy for the treatment of pulmonary regurgitations. Europe ESC published a guideline for the management of grown up congenital heart disease. It shows the indication of reintervention after repair of tetralogy and the focus on the indication of pulmonary valve replacement. The Canadian Cardiovascular Society in 2009 uh, published the consensus on management of adult with tetralogy and then noted some situations which may need reintervention after repair of the challenge. This randomized trial shows the use of QRS duration, RV and systolic volume, or RV ejection fraction threshold values for surgical or catheter valve implantation in patients with pulmonary regurgitation may be beneficial. The surgical pulmonary valve replacement results in a good outcome to the continuous pulmonary regurgitation, including a low 30-day and five-year mortality rates and acceptable five-year re PVR rate, significant decreases in RV volumes and increase in RV systolic function, increase in both LV systolic function volume and the decrease in QRS duration and the improved NYHA function. Uh, this study shows the prevention of progressive QRS prolongation by earlier pulmonary valve repair or replacement can potentially reduce the hazardous hazards of adverse events after pulmonary valve replacement. But the best timing is still unclear. The age at in intervention is the main risk factor of reintervention for Prosthetic pulmonary valve failure. The risk of reintervention is doubled when performed before the age of 20, 20 year, years old. Pulmonary valve replacement can result in acceptable short or medium term follow up consequences. But there is still lack of long-term follow-up results. Pulmonary valve replacement prefers the use of a bioprosthetic valve. The most disadvantage is deterioration. Medium time is approximately 15 years for most adult post Tetralogy recipients. Patients with tetralogy pulmonary atresia may use a conduit connecting 
right ventricular ventricle to pulmonary artery. If the pa patient need to second time pulmonary valve replacement, uh, there's a choice that they can use percutaneous pulmonary valve implantation. So the first time of pulmonary valve replacement is important. The valve ring of tissue bioprocesses serves as a useful landing zone for future valve in valve as cutaneous pulmonary valve implantation. Mechanical valve can also use uh, as a cho choice for PVR, but patients need lifelong anticoagulation. Patients with repaired tetralogy may need other operation procedures together with the PVR, including tricuspid valve proplasty, right ventricular outflow tractor re and the residual shunts repair and the aortic valve intervention. Risk anatomy, ventricular fibrillation and the bleeding may occur during the procedure. A survey of STS congenital heart surgery database shows the major in-hospital complications after surgical pulmonary valve replacement, including AV block requiring permanent pacemaker, renal failure requiring dialysis, mechanical circulatory support, neurological deficit persisting at discharge, frenetic frenetic nerve injury and unplanned reoperation. A cutaneous pulmonary valve implantation was first accomplished in 2000. The melody valve is made by bovine jangular vein with two available sites. Uh, relatively small size. Several clinical studies testing the melody valve and the resulting and accept, acceptable consequence. TPV dysfunction is primarily manifested by stent fracture loss of structural integrity and the recurrent stenosis. Edward Sapien made from three pericardial leaflets with diameter of larger, including 20, 23, 26, and 29 millimeters. Clinical trials also have a good Results. Uh, during the PPVI procedure, some complications can occur, including stent failure, fracture, conduit rupture, coronary compression, and endocarditis. Uh, look at the future. To meet the needs of the majority of patients with non-conduit outflow tract, off-label use of current available valves is being performed. And the newer devices such as the Harmony valve or the Ultra Adaptive present press denter are being developed. In China, the Venus T valve in uh, developed in China is suitable for a native right ventricle off-road tract and uh, have a good prospect. Uh, the summary of my uh, lecture. 
after the tetralogy repair, there are many pulmonary regurgitation patients in their adulthood. While the timing of re-intervention is not clear, the results are encouraging. The intervention includes surgical or percutaneous. The improved valve provides better results, less trauma for uh, re-intervention patients. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Chen. Uh, I will check the Q&A and chat box. Uh, so far, there are still no questions. Uh, for our participants, numbering 68, you can uh, type your questions or uh, write your comments in the chat box, which we will discuss uh, in the open forum for 20 minutes. We shall now proceed with the next speaker. May, may I ask a question? Oh, all right. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, you, sh you show that the, the ventricular fibrillation in the one of the risk of the, the, the during the PVR, but I didn't know that, that the ventricular fibrillation and then the, the risk of ventricular fibrillation in, in, is higher uh, during the PBR uh, than other re-operation uh, for the adult congenital heart disease patient. Excuse me, you mean uh, the medication uh, for PVR is higher? Ventricular fibrillation, VF. Ventricular fibrillation. Ventricular arrhythmia. arrhythmia. Yeah, ventricular fibrillation. Yes, higher uh, in which group, you mean? Higher than the other re uh, operation in HCHG patient. Is it? So One of the slides. Didn't, didn't catch uh, which slide. The, you, you show that the ventricular fibrillation is the one of the risk of the, the, the PBR. Oh. You showed it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So if that means uh, ventricular fibrillation, oh, the proof oh. that, that detected before the operation is it? Before the operation, you sh you say that, and I, I the in um, maybe Dr. Chen, um, do they do valve replacement because of ventricular arrhythmia? Is that one of the indications? Uh, yes, uh, if the patient uh, with uh, repair, uh, tetralogy repair uh, developed mm -hmm. arrhythmia, it may be time to, uh, uh, maybe too late for the, uh, for the uh, re-intervention. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will have the indication for the, uh, for the Q, QRS duration uh, prolongation uh, before it developed to the arrhythmia. Mm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chen, you have uh, probably a huge number of the uh, surgical studies with the, the reoperation of tetralogy flow. The, how about your uh, mean age of the uh, current, current era for the, what is the mean age of the reoperation or age or after the initial, open, initial close, ventricle closure? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, in my institute, we have more than 2,000 uh, <laughs> cases Big. Yes. Uh, each year. Uh, maybe about 200 tetralogy patients mm. in, uh, uh, e e each year. Mm. Uh, yes. Uh, so how about the mean, mean uh, age of uh, that? Mm. Yeah. But... Uh, uh, PVR is not uh, so often uh, mm -hmm. at the first, but uh, in recent years, uh, more more patients come to our hospital to seek help, and uh, we uh, we will uh, uh, make the decision according to the uh, the patients. Uh, uh, pulmonary 
uh, regurgitation degree or and the QS uh, uh, duration and uh, right uh, ventricle volume. And uh, you know, at, at first, uh, the patient do accept uh, reoperation. In yes, <laughs> that is very it's, important. Uh, a correction uh, for all uh, mm. after the initial operation. But uh, uh, we we change our mind and also patients change their mind. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, Lucy, can I have a question? Last yes. question. Okay. Um, having said that, is there any case about aortopexy uh, combined with PVR? or severe PR and then RV failure and then LV failure and aortopexy kind of cases do you do reoperation of long-term tetralogical follow? Aortopexy case. Yes, there are a lot of uh, patients uh, when we do the PVR operation, uh, they have uh, other problems like my mitral regurgitation and the chocosp regurgitation and uh, uh, and also the uh, aortic uh, valve problem is not uh, is not sell seldom, and so we may all the valves replacement uh, uh, sometimes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Chen. Uh, we yes. have exceeded our question and answer time, so we will now proceed to the second speaker. Uh, who will be discussing the management of arrhythmia in Pontan patients um, from the Department of Transition Medicine, Department of Congenital Heart Disease, uh, Shizuka General Hospital, and from the Department of Cardiology, Mount Fuji, Shizuka Children's Hospital. Let's welcome Dr. Aya Miyazaki. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you, Chairperson. Good evening, everybody. So, okay. I don't have any disclosure. The, let's start from arrhythmia in pontan circulation. Uh, to, to know that, uh, to consider the management of arrhythmia in pontan circulation, we need to know how arrhythmia affect to a pontan circulation. So, as you know, there is significant uh, increase in uh, arrhythmia burden in a patient with pontan circulation. The, uh, the left figure shows the cumulative freedom from atrial tachyarrhythmia, and the right figure shows those from sinus node dysfunction. Arrhythmia is regarded as an inevitable uh, uh, consequence in an AP pontan. However, even in an extra cardiac county and lateral tunnel, uh, there remains high incidence of arrhythmia. Uh, there was uh, several meta-analysis meta -analysis were published to compare the prevalence of arrhythmia uh, between extracardiac candies and lateral tunnel. However, the results were different in each analysis. It, uh, this paper showed a lower risk of uh, arrhythmia, including SVT and sinus tone dysfunction in extracardiac candies and lateral tunnel. This paper showed a higher cumulative freedom from tachyarrhythmia, but no uh, uh, tachyarrhythmia in extra cardiac candida and lateral tunnel, but no differences according to bloody arrhythmia or pacemaker implantation. And then this paper showed an advantage of extra cardiac candy only in SVT, only after pontan circulation. So it is uh, still uh, controversial. Which types of frontal procedure is favorable for long-term arrhythmia. However, uh, we should know that uh, even in TCPC, arrhythmia can observe during, during follow-up. Let's look at the hemodynamic effect of SVT uh, uh, on pontan circulation. This is an interesting paper showing the hemodynamic during supraventricular pacing SVT uh, to simulate SVT. This figure uh, show that the response during the SVT. 
aortic pressure decreased abruptly at the onset of patient, why the FEP increased? The blood pressure subsequently increased with some fluctuation. At the end of SVP, all quantum patients had a stable PP with a small fluctuation, but FVP was maintained at high levels. This figure shows the hemodynamic change during the SVP at 150 BPM and 180 BPM. Open and closed circle indicate child and adult patient. Changes in mean aortic pressure, femoral vein pressure, and no epinephrine level were greater at 180 SVP and in adult patient. Interestingly, FVP increased at a nadir of mean BP and showed a further additional significant increase at the both patient rate. And this figure shows the variation between ventral ejection fraction and hemodynamics during the SVP. The initial VP drop was positively correlated with the ejection fraction. This figure shows the relation uh, between QR aspiration and hemodynamics during the SVP. QR aspiration was inversely correlated with initial VP drop and was positively correlated with an increase in FVP and an increase in non-epinephrine during around 50 BPM patient. With this result, this paper concluded that in fontan patient, wide QR aspiration could the greater hemodynamic fluctuation at slower SVP, higher baseline BP, age, impaired ventricular function, late fontan repair, and the history of SVT were major determinants of hemodynamic deterioration during first SVT. This paper reported the quantum failure after arrhythmia. Left figure showed that those after tachyarrhythmia, right figure showed uh, uh, those after bloody arrhythmia. The development of an arrhythmia is associated with a heightened risk of subsequent failure of fontan circulation. Current treatment strategy prevent fontan failure in approximately half of these patients at 10 years. And this paper reported the underlying complication uh, in 26 patients with fontan circulation and the PLE. In Nasako showed that those before PLE and then out of Saku, those at the onset of PLE. Arsenia were observed in 15% before PLE and 31% at the onset of PLE. It is hard to tell which one, was, uh, which one is first, arsenia induced hemodynamic abnormalities or hemodynamic abnormalities induced arsenia. However, uh, 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 we can tell that the arsenia is strongly related with the hemodynamic situation. This is a summary of arsenia in fontan saturation. There is a significant increase in arsenia burden in patients with a fontan saturation, even in lateral tunnel and extra cardiac condy. A wider cure situation, a lower ejection fraction causes a greater hemodynamic deterioration during the SVT in fontan patients. Arrhythmia associated with an increased risk of fontan failure. I believe that the prevention of arrhythmia is the first considerable issue before management of arrhythmia. Atrial overload should be prevented or reduced as much as possible. The patient with AP fontan should be converted to the TCPC as soon as possible. RE intervention should be considered in a patient with uh, a river regurgitation, and an early pacemaker implantation should be recommended in a patient with sinus node dysfunction. The main maintenance of narrow QRS and good ejection fraction is also important. Myocardial protection and an early indication of CRT should be considered. Uh, when the patient have a rhythmogenic substrate before TCBC, it should be uh, removed by catheter ablation or surgical prior ablation before TCBC. Even when we try to prevent arrhythmia, it is impossible to inhibit it completely. So let's think about arrhythmia management in fontan patient. The arrhythmia management in fontan patient is not different from those in the other HHD patient. Uh, when, uh, uh, when patient have, uh, the first step of management is assessment of anatomy and hemodynamics. When patient have a hemodynamic abnormality, 
we must make effort to improve it with exploring every avenue. Uh, at the same time, we should consider controlling arsenia with the combination of anti arsenic drug cassette ablation and the device implantation. The choice of these methods should be done after understanding hemodynamic situation. About anti arsenic drugs, uh, this schema shows the recommendation of rhythm control uh, uh, from the expert consensus statement in ACHD published in 2014. Fontan patient is classified with complex CHD. Whether or not ventricular dysfunction exists, plus three drugs is the first choice as the AADs. That's it to say. AADs with negative inotropic effects should not be used for a Fontan patient. This, uh, uh, table, uh, this, this is a table showing the anti arsenic drugs according to a Bone Williams classification and the uh, Xi'an Gangi classification. Many of plus one uh, drugs, such as disopyramide, uh, propafenone, and flecanide, and calcium channel blocker, such as verapanol, has strong negative inotropic effect. So, it is that I can recommend. Uh, potassium channel blockers, sodium channel blockers with weak negative inotropic effect, bepsurgeo, digoxin, and beta blockers. About casita ablation, uh, this, uh, this paper showing the, the result of casita ablation in the AP Fontan. It, it, it is hard to ablate arismogenic substrate completely. However, clinical arismia severe D score decreased after casita ablation. Also in TCPC, uh, the, the result of casita ablation are not excellent with high recurrence rate. However, clinical arrhythmia severity score decreased after casita ablation, uh, even in a patient with recurrence. So casita ablation is not the perfect method to control tachyarrhythmia, but somehow effective. About device implantation, uh, this slide shows the hemodynamic change during the atrial pacing in extracardiac candid fontan. These figures show the uh, uh, pressure curves of the left ventricle and the central venous with various atrial pacing rate. Zooming in on these figures, uh, we can view that the uh, LVEDP and the CVP were lowest at atrial pacing of 70 per minute. So, heart rate is one of, one of the important uh, important factor to, to maintain the favorable fontan circulation. And then this slide shows the transseismic AV valve flow during changing the AV interval in TCPC fontan with complete AV bar. With setting of sense AV I of 120 milliseconds, percent DFT was 38% uh, indicating atrial ventricular dyssynchrony. After setting uh, 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 optimal sense uh, optimal sense to every interval so that the interval uh, end of a, a wave uh, coincident with complete closure of a wave valve, percent the uh, uh, atrial ventricular dyssynchrony improved, revealing with percent DFT of 58%. Further, diastolic TR was, uh, was disappeared after setting up optimal a wave interval. So, pacemaker timing especially lower rate and the AV interval is important to preserve good fontan circulation. Uh, this is a summary of arrhythmia management in fontan circulation. AADs with negative inotropic effects should not be used for a fontan patient. The result of cassie ablation is not excellent, but somehow effective. Pacemaker timing, especially lower rate and AV interval is important to preserve good fontan circulation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our conclusion. Even in TCPC, there remains a high incidence of arsenia. Uh, the upstream management of arsenia is crucial for important circulation. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Miyazaki. Um, we can entertain a few questions. Mm -hmm. uh, state your name and country. No questions in the question box and the chat box. The 
Dr. Miyazaki, that I have a um, question. Thank you for the say in that it's a, this topics is a very difficult and also even in the patient and even the doctors, it's a very difficult at uh, the topics. The, the, of course you introduce for the ablation or medication for the, this uh, arrhythmia management, the, but the, in the real patient management, it's, uh, we are always difficult to start with the medications or the, the patient, the difficult to send for the uh, decision, for the timing for the uh, arrhythmia management. Mm -hmm. In your practice, what is your, something like a speculation, you should start for the medication or you should have uh, the ablation, such kind of that easy to, easy to indication for the general audience or the general <laughs> doctors? Thank you, for, uh, th thank you for asking me, but uh, it's a hard question. Just uh, I can tell that, 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 that then as I showed, the most important things to, to prevent the arrhythmia, <laughs> you know? And then, so uh, the, to prevent arrhythmia, uh, 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 we, we, you know, we need, we, how can I say? They, but usually when patients have an uh, arrhythmia problem, then some the, some hemodynamic abnormality they have right, and then so and before occurrence of arrhythmia, maybe we need to and we need to um, we need to improve the hemodynamic abnormality. Mm. Sometimes patients have no symptom, then then but uh, then we need to start the treatment and before the, they they complain that symptom. The, for example, the patient have a breast the arrhythmia, but they can tolerate the, um, uh, until you know the long uh, un, until uh, occurrence of long pause or tachyarrhythmia. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, we should implant pacemaker in early time, the, and the, the, even they don't have any symptom, you know. And the the uh, the the fontan circulation is not the perfect the circulation hemodynamics. We uh, we uh, uh, all of us know about it. So, and then we need to close follow up, and follow up for those patients. And then we need to and then pick up the hemodynamic abnormality before they complain that something, you know. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much asking me. Uh, there's one question mm -hmm. in the question and answer uh, from Dr. Suki. In arrhythmia post-fontan procedure, what is in the indication we give uh, AAD with no inotropic, and which is the best beta blocker for a child? It's more post -fontan. What is the indication we uh, uh, give uh, AAD uh, uh, with, the, with no the... negative inotrope? Antiarrhythmic. Under drug. which is the what is the indication we give the uh, indication? Yes. Indication. And this beta blocker. Then I don't use the, the uh, antiarrhythmic drug until they complain that uh, uh, tachyarrhythmia, right? Then then but uh, we then 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 it depends on the situation. If they have a you know. The malignant tachyarrhythmia uh, uh, with uh, the hemodynamic, uh, uh, you know, abnormality, you know, uh, unstable hemodynamic. Then I would use the amiodarone and then and, uh, uh, as a first choice. But uh, if they have a just only show that that you know PVC or the several uh, uh, you know several atrial non-sustained atrial tachycardia, I just use the beta blockers. Mm -hmm. And which particular brand or type of beta blocker? Uh, I would choose Calvedrol. Calvedrol. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would. I would choose okay. Calvedrol. Okay. Yeah. Calvedrol. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that's uh, that's the only question. Okay. We can proceed now, Dr. Taji. Thank you very much. So, the, yes, we'd like to 
Thank you, thank you, Dr. Miyazaki. Thank you. Like move of the uh, next also very important issue for the adult congenital heart disease, is the pulmonary hypertension uh, presented by Dr. Uh, Lucia Cristinati, uh, it's okay, my presentation, in the uh, Gajamata University, Indonesia. So Dr. Lucia, please start your presentation. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and co-chair. And also thank you very much for to, to the organizing committee to uh, for the opportunity for us to, to talk uh, in this valuable meeting. Uh, I have no conflict of interest. Uh, yes, my talk today is about pulmonary arterial hypertension in Asia. Yes, uh, pulmonary hypertension is an increase in pulmonary vascular pressure caused by the restriction of blood flow through the pulmonary circulation uh, of the blood vessels. And pulmonary hypertension is defined as an increase in mean pulmonary arterial pressure, or mean PAP, more than 25 millimeter mercury at rest as assessed by red heart catheterization. Uh, this definition is used until the sixth uh, word symbol of PH uh, in NIS uh, uh, 2018. That, uh, there is a new definition that PH uh, has been defined as mean PA pressure more than 20 millimeter mercury. So there is a decrease of 5 millimeter mercury uh, for the definition of pulmonary hypertension. Uh, this is a clinical classification of pulmonary hypertension. As we know that pulmonary hypertension divided into five groups. Group one is pulmonary arterial hypertension or PAH. Group two is pulmonary hypertension due to left heart disease. Group three is pulmonary hypertension due to lung disease and or hypoxia. Group four is PH due to pulmonary artery obstruction. And group five is a pulmonary hypertension with unclear and or multifactorial mechanisms. And this talk, I will focus on the uh, pH group one or pulmonary arterial hypertension. Uh, as we can see here that there are many diseases that included in these groups uh, because uh, they have a similar uh, histopathological appearance. So uh, pulmonary artery hypertension or PH group one is a progressive disease caused by narrowing or uh, tightening of the pulmonary arteries that makes the uh, right side of the heart becomes enlarged due to the increased strain or pump of pumping blood through the lungs. And PH is characterized by uh, mean PA pressure more than 20 millimeter mercury at rest Mean PA wedge pressure is less than 15 millimeter mercury, and PPR is more than three Woods units. And this is the algorithm how we uh, can diagnose PA. It's start if the patient have a symptom and sign of pulmonary hypertension, suggestive of pulmonary hypertension, and uh, we know that echocardiography become the the first screening tool for. A pulmonary hypertension by a probability of pH uh, whether this patient is classified as into low, uh, intermediate, or high probability of uh, pH. And after uh, excluding uh, type 2, type 3, and uh, type 4 by uh, performing VQ scan, so we go to the possibility of uh, pH group 1 by a definite criteria or uh, the gold standard with using uh, right heart catheterization. And as we know that the uh, uh, pathogenesis of uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension can be uh, explained by three pathway. First is endothelium pathway, the second is nitric oxide pathway, and the third is prostacycline, uh, prostacycline pathway. As we know that uh, endothelin is uh, a strong vasoconstrictor, uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, nitric oxide and prostacycline is a strong vasodilator. 
And in case of pulmonary arterial hypertension, there is a imbalance between uh, endothelin as a vasoconstrictor and a decrease of uh, nitric oxide and prostacycline. And in this uh, disease, the endothelin will be uh, overexpression. And from this uh, three pathway, uh, currently there are 12 uh, drugs specific for pulmonary arterial hypertension from uh, this three pathway, endothelial receptor antagonists, PDE5 inhibitors, and uh, prostanoid, and also IP receptor antagonists. Uh, and we can see here that uh, uh, the class of recommendation is uh, varied, uh, various variation between uh, uh, the drugs. And how about the pH in Asia? Uh, in this slide, we can see that uh, the, uh, the etiology of uh, pH in Asia is various variation among uh, population in Asia, Indonesia, Korea, and Singapore. Uh, the most common etiology of pH are congenital heart disease, uh, yet an interesting point here is that Indonesia predominantly has 87% uh, of CHD uh, congenital heart disease as the PAH etiology. But interesting uh, thing is uh, if we can see from the Japan, uh, Japan has only 8% uh, uh, of congenital heart disease as the etiology of PAH. Uh, and 56% uh, of etiology in Japan is because of uh, idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension. As far as I know that uh, in Japan, there, there is a, a screening program for congenital heart disease uh, that established since 1985. Uh, it, maybe it, it, it can explain why the number of uh, patients uh, uh, with congenital heart disease uh, is less uh, as the etiology of pulmonary arterial hypertension. And this is the uh, characteristic of patients with PAH in Asia. This slide shows that uh, female are more dominant compared to male. Uh, this data shows no difference between uh, countries in Asia and data in Europe and also in USA showing no difference. In regards of the mean age uh, of uh, first pH diagnosis, Singapore has the oldest mean age with uh, 50 years old, whereas Indonesia has the youngest mean of age with uh, 34.7 years old. It is quite uh, interesting data since uh, we understand that Indonesia has no screening program right now, so that uh, the first diagnosis of pH in Indonesia due to manifestation of the progressivity PAH with, uh, with undetect in undetectable for, uh, from childhood. How about the drug availability in, among uh, Asia country? There are variation of availability drug among Asia country. As we can see that Japan has uh, most completed, uh, complete uh, drug for, for PAH. Uh, but Indonesia has the most limited drug available comparing the other countries. Moreover, some drugs are not available widely in most hospitals there. Hence, here in Indonesia, we still try to do the best to advocate the government to provide the drug widely. Then uh, we talk about uh, pH survival. We, we got uh, four publications in Asia countries. First is uh, pH survival in uh, Singapore, uh, published by Lim in, in 2019. And uh, from this uh, data, data following 14 years cohort from Singapore, we see that in seven years, Hereditary PAH shows having the highest survival rate, 80%. However, after 10 years, 
Inyanda Harisi shows the highest survival rate among other etiologies, which is 60.4%. Uh, How about Japan? Survival analysis were done by Tamura et al. 2018. And we can see here that after three years from first uh, pH diagnosis by CAT, uh, there was a 91.5% survival rate from free from death and lung transplantation outcome with a 16 death. And this is data from uh, Thailand. Uh, they published about Thailand uh, Kenyan heart disease PAH survival. And uh, from the uh, cohort data from Thailand shows that after 15 years observation, almost uh, more than 90% were survived in population PAH with uh, prevalent systemic to pulmonary uh, shunt. On the other hand, the worst outcome was population PAH with small defect and uh, less than 40% uh, survive. This is data from uh, South Korea about the PAH survival. Data from uh, Chung et al. 2015, with three years observation uh, shows that after three years, the uh, survival probability was more than 80%. In figure two in the right side, uh, we can see that Kenyan uh, heart disease shows as the best etiology in regards of survival rate, 96.1% uh, uh, with significant de de value. But uh, con connective tissue disease is shown as the worst etiology compared with the others with only 81.2% survival. So as a conclusion, uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension is a progressive disease. There are several challenges and unmet needs relating to PAH diagnosis and treatment in Asia. Kenyan heart disease has the best survival compared to other etiology. Future efforts should focus on developing PH Asia registry, which collected from nation-based registry, and screening programs should be established to prevent PAH caused by congenital heart disease. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lucia. The, this is a very important issue for the, but the, the this. In your lecture, very say clarified for the, the even in a situation of the pulmonary hypertension, and the country's situation is very different from the country by country in the yes. Asia. That is very important. Yes. So, is there any questions or um, the between the among the uh, the panelists uh, speakers? So the in the, you show that congenital heart disease is a very big part for the uh, pulmonary hypertension. How about I say that each of the uh, categorized classified for the congenital heart disease, even in the congenital heart disease, VSD or ASD? Such, what, what, how about that? Do you have any information about the percentage of the, uh, the yes. disease? Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have uh, data from Indonesia that uh, majority of patients with uh, left to right shunt is ASD, mm. almost 80%, mm. uh, uh, followed by VSD and then PDA. Mm. And small numbers, uh, only um, um, AP windows, mm. AP window, but most are uh, almost 80% is ASD. Mm. So the uh, doctors from the Pakistan asked about the uh, indication for the bosentan or sildenafil for the medication of the uh, this kind of the uh, disease. Do you have any suggestions for the strategies for the pH specific medication for the uh, congenital heart disease with pulmonary hypertension? Uh, yes. Uh... Uh, yes, uh, uh, treatment or management of PH is uh, 
depend on the stratification. We first we have to strat stratify whether this patient uh, stratify as uh, low risk, uh, intermediate risk, or high risk. In a patient with a low and intermediate risk, uh, so we can start with uh, monotherapy, mm. or uh, we can start with com combination therapy. Mm. But in case of a high risk patient, so we have to start with a combination therapy. And uh, yes, uh, we can combine, combine uh, between um, Bosentan and Sildenafil. But unfortunately, in our country, we, we don't have uh, endothelial receptor antagonists like Bosentan, Masitentan, and Ambisentan uh, right now. Mm. Maybe uh, next year, we, we will have this uh, drug. Mm. Thank you. Some of the patient with the, for example, AST, uh, the closure of the catheter closure plus conventional the medication like such as diuretics or heart failure management, that is uh, contributing for the improvement of the pulmonary hypertension. Do you have any such kind of experience? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, in my country, uh, many patients, most of the patients come late. Mm. So uh, usually they, they come uh, with a complication of pulmonary arterial hypertension. Some of them are already uh, fall in uh, right, uh, right heart failure. So uh, we make a strategy uh, for ASD, for example, if the pulmonary uh, uh, pressure is so high, uh, first we, we will uh, try to treat first, and then uh, we will evaluate uh, six months or one year later by uh, echo and also right heart catheterization. If uh, possible to close, then we will close the AST and continue to give uh, medication for this patient. Uh, yes, until the pressure is uh, uh, decreased. Yes, thank you. Lucia, one more question from Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> So that you are, your country is also very big and uh, many islands. So the question is uh, not not centralized hospital, some the regional local local hospital. How do they manage for the pH, the congenital heart disease with pulmonary artery hypertension? Do screening. Yes. Um, yes. Firstly. Um, uh, by by echocardiography, uh, we can diagnose this patient whether the, uh, this patient uh, the, the etiology and also the probability of pulmonary hypertension. Uh, then, uh, as we know that uh, uh, the form diagnosis is a uh, standard is uh, by using a red heart catheterization, but in Indonesia. Uh, we try to to to, uh, to use uh, echocardiography to establish the diagnosis of PAS. Although this is not not uh, right, I mean because uh, guidelines say that the gold standard is using red heart catheterization. Mm. But uh, in a, a limited uh, resources area, we try to use uh, echocardiography to confirm the diagnosis of PAS by criteria that yes, maybe not so uh, can uh, similar with uh, right heart cat data. Mm. Yeah, I think say, the screen system using the yes. in the routine echocardiography is very important for the, that do, yes, do uh, take, uh, yeah. detect for the pH. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we try in our uh, area, uh, we try to screening, to make a screening for a school student by using uh, physical examination and ECG mm. and also uh, oxy okay. Uh, oximetry. Okay, thank you. Maybe Lucia, Lucia, you please the mic on. The, you mentioned about the pulmonary hypertension in Indonesia. You may have a pregnancy in that patient. Do you have any comment or experience about the pregnancy with pulmonary hypertension? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, 
we have uh, experience uh, the managed patient with uh, yes you uh, can listen me yes yes okay yes uh, we have many experiences uh, uh, treating patient with a pregnancy but uh, most of them are uh, ASD uncorrected and uh, only uh, just known that they have uh, pineal hair disease while she pregnant. Hmm. Some of them are uh, pH already pH, and some of them also have uh, uh, also Eisenmenger syndrome. Hmm. Some of them uh, refuse to termination. Hmm. So uh, we uh, we continue the pregnancy, uh, and uh, we give uh, silenafil for uh, hmm. for this hmm. and. For uh, my experience, uh, the baby, although the the silenafil is not maybe not not so safe, but uh, compared to other uh, PAH drug, is uh, more the most effective, most mm. safe compared to the other, and the baby uh, in a uh, deliver uh, in a good condition right now. Thank you. Please, please, <laughs> Michael, have a lecture for the next year in Seoul. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so the, 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 yeah, Luz, why don't you have any, any the comment about the pregnancy about in, in the Philippines? Yes, uh, I have a question for Dr. Lucy. Um, did I get you right? Breastfeeding is not recommended, even um, if they are not symptomatic, the, the mothers? Uh, the breastfeeding is not recommended means not everybody, if the mother has um, medication or some very um, high pulmonary artery hypertension, high, high risk group, or some eyes and mango like that, uh, that group case not recommended. Um, but the other um, cases sometimes um, works and waiting, mm. yes. Mm. So what would you recommend? What would you recommend? Um, because uh, in the Philippines, we're very um, vigilant with breastfeeding. Uh, the, the neonatologists are very strong. So unless it's, there's a contraindication for the mother or contraindication for the baby because of certain medication, then we still recommend breastfeeding. Mm. So not unless the mother is in heart failure. Yeah. Otherwise, we, they push for pure breastfeeding, purely mm. breastfeeding even. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that is also a very big issue. Dr. G. Mei Chan, why don't you your microphone on? Yes, so the pregnancy in tetralogy with the patient may had better to take a operation before the the pregnancy. Do you do you have any comment about the operation timing? before or after pregnancy? Uh, we will recommend it, uh, uh, EDR mm. operation before the pregnancy. Mm. Uh, if the patient uh, have got pregnant, we will evaluate his or her uh, heart uh, function, determining that the steps. Mm. Mm. Yes. Thank you very much. Dr. Miyazaki, why don't you microphone on? The Fontaine, Fontaine pregnancy is a very difficult or say challenging area. So the, do you have any experience or a comment about uh, pregnancy Fontaine, in Fontaine? Uh, I don't have any comment, but I have a question. And then also Dr. Jimmy Chan had a same question. And then the, you show the three cases. The, the one is a, a right to left shank, and the second is the Fontan circulation, and the third one is MVR. The all three, they, they need to uh, need to be prevented the thrombosis. What did you do during the pregnancy for these patients? Uh, uh, the, you you use uh, the anticoagulation therapy or uh, anti-platelet uh, the drugs? Uh, yes, I 
already showed at the end of the cases, the first case has been, and then the second case, the, the good Fontaine case, Carbidillo and aspirin, and then the third case, whole pregnancy period, low molecular heparin we okay, use, see. and then uh -huh. after delivery, um, 24 hours after delivery, she feels okay at the time, switch to warfarin again. And then before pregnancy warfarin, INR. Okay. Okay. And, and then the, so it's treatment strategy for preventing the thrombosis. The, the basically aspirin is that correct? Um, it depends on the cases because mm -hmm. yeah, because of sometimes fountain uh, mm -hmm. very much high risk of thrombogenic. Mm -hmm. In that mm -hmm. case, mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. um, uh, NOAC, NOAC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or some um, has been, but, but warfarin is not everybody. Mm -hmm. Vevula cases, um, mechanical valve, we mm -hmm. should put warfarin, but mm -hmm. other cases like Fontaine, diverse uh, lateral tunnel or some TCPC or BCPS and all different cases. Mm -hmm. So we use um, aspirin and the other add-on medication is depends on the patient's case. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. See, you have one question from the audience. Yes. The, if the, the, in the third case for the uh, mitral okay. valve replacement, okay. the, once she come to the, before the six weeks of the pregnancy, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you manage for the- uh, Yeah, that's a good question. And yeah, also that's really... The, yeah, fetal, fetal screen, fetal echo screening. Yes, that's really good question. So. That's also planned pregnancy. Mm. So at the time she, oh, I wanna, well, I want to have a baby. At the time we tried to, okay, warfarin is very toxic for the embryo and embryopathy. So, but before pre pregnancy, she takes warfarin. And then if the period council at the clinic, we decided to quit the warfarin and then heparinization. But mm -hmm. the low molecular heparin, sub -Q, subcutaneous low molecular heparin. But at the time, we are very worried about uh, in between uh, she can get pregnant or not before the confirmation of pregnancy. So at the first two weeks, uh, I, I think I'm pregnant or not. I doubt like that period we mm -hmm. admitted her. So two weeks, she were admitted in the hospital. And then um, heparinization, and then six week confirmed pregnancy. Mm. So at the time we just um, switched to low molecular heparin. So whole pregnancy period, no warfarin, no warfarin at all. Yeah, that That's is a very same. good point. I yeah, think. educate touch kind of education before the pregnancy. Yes, this is very, very important. Yeah. Uh, that's not easy, but uh, quite, quite, <laughs> yes, yes, quite yeah. good uh, rapport I need. Mm -hmm. And then uh, please come, please come, and then please bring your husband and, and like that, bring your mm -hmm. family like that. So a couple of time counseling I did. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lucy. You may have a good idea about, I say, management for next year's ACH symposium in Korea. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> I'm trying. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the yeah the actually 90 minutes uh, the, the, uh, same presentation time is a very short for us, but mm -hmm. uh, it's already times come. The Lucy, why don't you have some comment about the, this session? Yes. Uh, so thank you very much to everybody who attended the session. Uh, thank you very much to our distinguished speakers. Um, everybody learned a lot. And I'd like to thank the organizing committee and the co-chair, Dr. Taiji Akadji, for this opportunity to participate in this uh, session. Thank you very much. And to the speakers, um, very good and thank you. Okay, why don't you see, see each other again in uh, next year in Seoul? Thank yes. you. Thank welcome, welcome, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Please come to Seoul <laughs> next year. October is very beautiful in Seoul, so um, we are um, we want to be happy hosts to welcome everybody uh, ACHD symposium in Seoul, Korea next year. Okay, all of the audience, thank you very much for that. Uh, more, nearly one hundred audience that please join us again in the somewhere in in. Uh, 
Japan or so, so uh, Korea. Thank yes. you. Hopefully, no more COVID. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Stay healthy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.